Suzanne Laidlaw is a business coach, joins us in the studio. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. We have a a lack of, I suppose a lot of people would say, a lack of great leadership and vision around at the moment. Um, Not great examples are being set. So how would you define what makes a great leader? Um, I think all the comments that the people have said are amazing. It's it's a massive culmination of, of a lot of their comments. Um, and, and often people talk about leadership and management and they get them confused. Very different. Yeah. So leadership is about inspiring people. It's it's all of many of the, the things that the behaviours that people have said. It's about someone who's passionate about what they're doing. And then that passion and inspiration filters down to the rest of the team from their actions, not just from their words. Then when we talk about management, that's managing processes and behaviours. That's totally different from from being a leader. That's, you know, when we're inspiring and and we're communicating and we're connecting with the passion of the organisation and the people that are in that organisation. So you could argue that we're, we're, I'm using these words carefully, we're sort of okay on the management side, but we're really lacking in leadership. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I was just doing a presentation to WA Leaders only an hour ago and one of the stats that I looked up in preparation was that 30, Deloitte says 34% of the Australian workforce are highly engaged. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's two thirds that aren't. Exactly. Right. And so these are these are these are uh, you know proper statistics. So these are people who who are not in, inspired. We've got thirty four percent of people, and all of the rest are not engaged in what they're doing. So, so what's the consequence of that, Suzanne? The consequences is of every ten thousand dollars that somebody spends on wages of someone who's disengaged, three and a half thousand is is out the window because mm. they're they're calling in sick, they're they're doing a lot of errors. Um, there's lost time to injuries. They're not focused. They're looking at Facebook. They're looking because they're not inspired by their leader. They're mm. looking at Facebook. They're texting on their phone under their desk. Um, all of these things. Um, so what about at a national level? I was saying you know the fish rots from ahead. We often refer to companies, but but also to countries so we can look at governments and at the moment fair to argue that it, it's a, a strange time that we're living in. How does that impact the population? Uh, very much so, and I think one of the one of the people that we were that were interviewed there said it correctly is the congruence, you know, congruence with what they believe in. And we've seen our leaders stand up there and talk about what they believe in, and then six months, twelve months later, they 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 do a, a total three hundred and sixty, and they they they're actually you know saying that they really lied. So when we respect a leader and look up to a leader, we want someone who can actually be congruent. Um, with their words and their actions and, and be true to their word, not not change, you know, every six months or 12 months, depending on, you know, where the, where the best paycheck is or, or, or whatever. <laughs> That's right. What's in it for them? Exactly. Uh, Suzanne Laidlaw is with us, a business coach, and we're talking about what makes a great leader. What are you looking for in a leader? Um, 0437 922 720, or you can call us on 1300 222 720. What are you looking for? Um, because it would really help if leaders knew what perhaps they were meant to be doing. And at the moment, perhaps our leaders feel that they can get away with anything because no one's saying, that's not what I want. Exactly. And I think, you know, a lot of it boils down to why as well. And, you know, a lot of people, I no doubt that are listening, have seen Simon Sinek's YouTube on why. You know, people people care about what they're doing when they understand why. So if they're aligned with, you know, what the leader's passionate about, what they're doing in their role, and, and the, the leader understands the why of the people, and I think one of the ladies mentioned it, that they actually care about them, they understand their why, and they understand their organisation's why, the whole organisation works as this symbiotic, you know, um, amazing, um, you know, um, I suppose, um, togetherness, really. Mm, true. Um, Mal Centre text says, Hi, James, a good leader is someone who won't blame everyone else for the problems, to be honest, and who leads from the front. Absolutely. So honesty, yes. and, it, and it, it's interesting, and I mean, we could always use politicians because they're great examples, but this is perhaps where politicians are losing our trust um, because they do tend to blame everyone else. They always look at Absolutely. the other party, regardless of which party we're talking about. Their honesty is often uh, in question because yeah. we know full well that, that isn't a fact and they don't always lead from the front. Absolutely. And we all know when we've got a relationship with someone that we work with or a friend, once they start to, to tell us porkies and once they start to tell us one thing one day and one thing the next, what happens? Our trust Mm. Our trust goes out the window and we're talking about countries here and, you know, if our leaders are, are, are not congruent with what they said six months ago, 
what happens? Our trust goes. What does it do for us, though, in terms of what we feel we can get away with? Well, if they're setting that example, well, quite frankly, I might be able to get away with X, Y and Z too. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that comes down to um, how our culture has been since we were a child, how we were brought up. And often I speak to people in the workplace and they're not congruent with the organisation or the the leader of the organisation and they choose to lose, they choose to leave because they're not congruent. So I think a lot of that is is about how they were brought up, you know, were they brought up in an environment where, you know, it doesn't matter when at all cost or were they brought up in an environment with the ethics of follow your own your own morals, follow your own ethics, and I was brought up that way that your your own morals and ethics, I do not compromise on them. Never, ever, ever. Doesn't matter how much money it is, I will not compromise on them. I will always stick true to myself. But some people were not brought up like that. Then that's true. I, I was interested in this story because earlier today I was reading the paper and there was a story about Nadal and Djokovic doing an exhibition match in Saudi Arabia, obviously being paid a lot of money to do so, but on the back of what's just been going on in Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. and the murder journalist or the missing journalist. Um, it, it's interesting because those two players have a lot of integrity, people respect them, mm-hmm. and yet still they're going to go and turn up, do the right thing, take the, take the money. And it makes you all think, well, if they're going to do that, governments are doing this, well, where do I fit in? Because all these people who are respected, who are supposedly leaders, yes. are setting bad examples. Yes. And I think maybe it comes down to, you know, what they feel is the right or the wrong ethical thing to do. And, you know, often when you've got politics and sport that are, you know, um, meshing together, the sports people say, well, that's got nothing to do with my sport. My sport is a separate, a separate um, you know, issue and I'm not going to let politics affect my sport. Yeah. So it depends. Again, it comes from them. What are their ethics? Yes. What are their morals? What's, yes. you know, what's their, um, their focus that sits right with them? And it, and it may be right with them. Or if it's not, they might be feeling in, in, their, in their guts, well, oh, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing here. You'd hope so. Uh, Julia says leadership is offering yourself to the job. Assisting the organisation develops a culture of care where workers want the business to succeed. By doing this, the workers feel valuable and respected by the association. Bonus is they don't see their job as work and they perform and engage better. Absolutely, absolutely. And and that's that's one thing that I always do with organisations is when you're choosing people to be part of the organisation, are they passionate about, about you know, what your organisation is all about? And I remember hearing once on the radio a lady that was, you know, going for a position um, at an abattoir and she was a vegan and she said she couldn't take the position. Now, she's not, her passion is not aligned with the organisation. So it's really important when, when people are, are choosing new team members for their organisation what are they passionate about? Yeah. You know, am I employing, a, you know, a computer programmer? Okay, you know, tell us about what you love about computers. Yeah. Let's just take a couple of quick calls. Jason joins us on Drive. Hello, Jason. Hello, how are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. Yep. Uh, yeah, look, I think um, we talked about morals and, and just touching now on your beliefs. I think it's really important for leaders to to have an embodiment of values, whether it's an organisation, a small team or, or even a country. And I think um, an embodiment of values just stands for everything that the group or the followers or the workplace or the country even is is what they believe in and what what they're about, essentially. And I think if a leader embodies values, they they kind of cross all the T's and dot all the I's in terms of what we all want and what page we're on as as a collective. Thank you for that, Jason. Really good point because a lot of companies set their values and they yep. put them out on the wall and then you see leaders do completely exactly. the opposite. Yeah, and my point on that is, is when I'm talking to CEOs or executives in, in around their values is what are the behaviours that are aligned with the values that we agree as an organisation that we're going to live by so that not only do we have the values, we have the agreed behaviours that are aligned with those values so that then the whole team has agreed these are the behaviours that display honesty. These are the behaviours that display customer service so that it's not just these fancy, as you said, things on the wall and, and you've been standing there for half an hour and the lady's got terrible, giving you terrible service and you've got customer services <laughs> number one. You're thinking, could you read that, please? We see that a lot. Yeah. Just quickly, Sam joins us. Hello, Sam. Hi. I found the topic very interesting, but I think one of the things which was not 
or which might have been mentioned, is that some of our leaders lack vision, whether it's in the political arena or whether even yes. in, in an organisation. It's true. They I, seem to be running on a conformed wheel. Yeah, uh, I, it's it's a really good point. I often use the sort of term leadership and vision in the same sentence, but there is a lack of both. Would you not agree, Suzanne? Yeah, I think so. And and I, maybe it's where they've come up. If they've come up from ego-driven why, then, then they would lack vision because it's not been about them. And, you know, level five leadership is, is when you're interested in something bigger than your own ego and making a difference. So if, they've, if they're, they're, their drive has been their ego and their own agenda from the beginning, which, I, you know, we do see, then their vision's not going to be very clear mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they're not looking at the bigger picture. Very true. Uh, Phil joins us uh, on Drive. Hello, Phil. Hello. Good afternoon. Um one of the things I think we've we've missed out on is that we, our leaders need to be visionaries, but they also need to uh, accept that there's a fault. Okay, I made a decision to do it this way, but now information yeah. that has been gained says that's the wrong way to go. You shouldn't be scared to say, yeah. I made a mistake. You should grasp that and move on and say, look, this is where we're going. This is why we're not doing that. Yeah. And you can see leaders in, in Parliament where they... Um, they change their mind. Well, they've only changed their mind because they've been given more information. Tell, tell me what you think, change. Phil. T- tell me how you think social media, the media in general, is having an influence on that. Almost, you know, with regards to vision, almost th- the fear of putting something out there which might get laughed at or ridiculed or whatever it might be. The, the, the media slash social media is destroying it because people now are scared to say what they think or what could possibly be done and you can think about people are talking about to go and live on Mars soon. Well, if you had have brought that up 20 years ago, you would have been laughed at. <laughs> if you, you talk about people wanting to go on these space flights, yeah. 10 years ago, you would have been laughed at. Yeah. Okay, Phil, thank you very much indeed. Just on that, Suzanne, uh, mm-hmm. how much do you think that kind of putting yourself out there with a big vision and a plan is being affected by the world we're living in with regards to social media and the media? Um, I think a lot of it depends on the generation we're talking about because if you're an older generation like myself, it doesn't affect. Younger generation, it definitely affects. But the point that Phil made that I think is really valid as far as the topic of leadership is vulnerability. So admit you're wrong sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And Brene Brown, some... yeah, I mean, I don't know if anyone's ever read any of her books, but they're fascinating on, yeah. on the actual power of being vulnerable, saying, I was wrong, guys you know, I've really um, messed up this project. How can we fix it as a team together? I'm human too. And it's there is actually power in being vulnerable, whereas people see it as a weakness. Mm. It's actually not. And in leadership, it's a strength for the, for the actual leader to say, hey, I'm vulnerable. I've made a mistake. Let's fix this up. We're all human. We're just trying to do a good job here. That would be refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Really good to talk to you. Thank you. We'll hopefully have some better leaders very near future. Thanks oh, for coming I in. I think so. Thank you very much, Tara. Suzanne Laidlaw, business coach with us.